right, students, this video is going to go over guess stoichiometry. So some good news is if you understand stoichiometry uh, from the last unit, you're going to understand guess stoichiometry without a problem. The bad news, though, is that if you had a hard time with stoichiometry, you're going to have a hard time with this because we're going to introduce a new conversion factor. So come in to tutoring if you didn't understand stoichiometry the first time to make sure you really understand before our test. All right, so in our class, we are just going to do gas stoichiometry problems that are at STP. That means it's at zero degrees Celsius and one atmosphere of pressure. We don't have to know those values for these gas stoichiometry problems, but that was just a reminder when you see STP, that's giving you information. Okay. All right, anyways, um, if it wasn't at STP, we would actually have to do some different calculations and different ways of thinking through the problems, but we don't have to worry about that in level chemistry. All right, so we are going to be using a new conversion factor. So one mole of a gas is equal to 22.4 liters of a gas. So we're going to use that conversion factor just like we use molar mass, just like we use Avogadro's number. Okay, so one mole of a gas is equal to 22.4 liters of a gas. Let's see how that looks. So first off, I want to remind you that we do stoichiometry when the question is talking about two different substances. Okay. So this question on page 12, number one, is talking about two different gases. It's talking about nitrogen gas and it's talking about hydrogen gas. So we have to do two different, or a stoichiometry problem. Now, the questions that we've had up until this point in the unit, we haven't had to worry about stoichiometry because we were dealing with the same sample of gas and we weren't changing what it was that we were talking about. So pay attention to the wording to know if you have to do stoichiometry or not. If you have to do stoichiometry, you need to have a balanced chemical reaction. So let's go ahead and balance this. We need a two over here and we need a three over here. Okay, so then remember, we're going to write down our givens um, around our reaction. So we have 0 0.100 moles of this and we're looking for the volume or the liters of this, okay? So that means we're going to have to do one step to get over to the nitrogen and one step to get into the volume. So remember, when we do stoichiometry, we always start by writing our given 0 0.100 moles of hydrogen. Now, since we're already in moles of hydrogen, the unit that we're starting with goes at the bottom of our conversion factor, moles of hydrogen. And if we're going into moles directly into our um, stoichiometry, that's where we're going to switch from moles of one thing to moles of another thing. So that means I'm going to use my coefficients to switch from moles of hydrogen to moles of nitrogen. Okay, now, now that I'm in moles of nitrogen, I can switch it again. The unit that I start with up on the top, that unit goes down here at the bottom. Now what number will I put with moles of nitrogen? I'm going to put one not because it's the coefficient, but because this is where I'm going to switch and say one mole of nitrogen gas is equal to 22.4 liters of nitrogen. So you can see it's the same way of using the molar mass or Avogadro's number. It's just a different number. And this is on your periodic table, so you can always refer back to that if you forget. So when we calculate, we'll have 0.1 divided by 3 because it's in the bottom times by 22.4 because it's in the top. And remember, when we do stoichiometry, our sig figs are always based off of our starting value here. So we should get three sig figs. So our answer should be 747, 0.747. And that's liters of nitrogen gas. Okay, let's take a look at the next question. So how many grams of oxygen, so remember, we're going to write it down here, grams of oxygen are needed to generate 11.2 liters of carbon dioxide. So we have to have a balanced reaction, okay? So we know we're going to have to do some stoichiometry because it's talking about oxygen and carbon dioxide. So let's balance the reaction. We need a two here in front of our water and a two here in front of our oxygen. So we have to go up over, down. Okay, so we have three steps to our stoichiometry sequence. So we're going to start by our given. Our given is 11.2 liters 
of CO2. I guess I should have drawn my arrows a different direction, huh? Let me fix that. We're going up, over, down. There you go. All right, so since we have liters of CO2, we're going to have liters of CO2 down here. Remember that whatever unit you're starting with, that unit goes at the bottom of your conversion factor. The number that goes with liters is always going to be 22.4. And we know that 22.4 liters of CO2 is equal to what? Is equal to one mole of CO2. Once you get it into moles, your next step is going to be to use the mole ratio from your balanced reaction. So I have to have moles of CO2 again down here because I have moles of CO2 up here. I'm going to use a one this time because that's the coefficient of CO2 in my reaction. I'm trying to find out some information about oxygen. So I have to put moles of oxygen up here and that's going to be a two because that's my coefficient of the oxygen. I have to keep going. So I have moles of O2 down here. I'm going to put a one here. I've already used my coefficient. Remember from stoichiometry, I use a coefficient over a coefficient. And I'm trying to find the mass. So I know I'm going to put grams of O2 up here. So one always has to go underneath the molar mass, which in this case it's 32. So let's go ahead and solve. We've got 11.2. We're going to divide by 22.4 because it's in the bottom. We're going to multiply by 2 because it's in the top and multiply by 32 because it's in the top. Our starting value tells us that we get three sig figs. Now the answer comes out to be 32 exactly, so I add a 0 0.0 to get me my three sig figs. And that's going to be grams of O2. All right? Okay, let's take a look at the next question. So again, what volume of oxygen is needed for the complete combustion of 53.3 grams of propane? It's giving us those clues, complete combustion, oxygen and propane, telling us that we're going to have to have a reaction and do some stoichiometry. So we balance our reaction. I need a three here for the carbons. I need a four here to balance the hydrogens and then a five here to balance my oxygens. I'm starting with 53.3 grams of propane, and I'm trying to find the volume of my oxygen. So that means I'm going to go up, over, and down. So remember, I start with my given, 53.3 grams of C3H8. So what unit goes down here at the bottom? Grams of C3H8. Remember, whatever unit I start with, that same unit has to go at the bottom. What number is going to go with grams? The molar mass. So I calculate the molar mass of propane, C3H8, and I put it down here, 44.11. I know that the molar mass is equal to one mole of propane up here. Then, now that I'm in moles, whatever unit, remember, is up here, that unit goes down here at the bottom. And I'm going to use my mole ratio, my coefficients from the balanced reaction, to switch from propane into oxygen. So that's a five. I'm not done yet, though, because I'm looking for the volume of oxygen. So I have to keep going. So what unit is going to go down here at the bottom? That's going to be moles of oxygen. How many moles of oxygen? Just one this time because I've already used my coefficient. I'm looking for the liters, so the volume, so that means one mole of oxygen is equal to 22.4 liters of O2. And I can go ahead and calculate, so 53.3 divided by 44.11 because it's in the bottom, times 5 because it's in the top, times 22.4 because it's in the top. My starting value tells me I get three sig figs. So my answer would be rounded to 135 liters of O2. And that's how we do gas stoichiometry at STP. So as you're practicing in your packet, if you have any questions, just let me know. Thanks.